I'm here today with Bert Thornley, uh, one of the uh, Carlton Premiership players of 1970. Uh, 40 years on from that memorable day, Bert has come back to have a look at the new facility. Bert, first of all, welcome back. Um, what are your thoughts of the, the new place having set foot in, in it for the first time? Oh, well, it's, it's quite mind-blowing actually when we look back to what we thought were reasonable uh, rooms and facilities then, you know, they just fade in a comparison. I mean, this is just magnificent and uh, it's a credit to the club the way we've sort of rebounded after a couple of turbulent years and, uh, yeah, just, gee, if the, if the guys don't appreciate what they've got here, I wish they could have a time warp and go back. Um, yeah, it's just fabulous, you know, but the atmosphere... You know, when I first got here this morning, I walked out and the glass doors opened out on, on the ground and the hairs on the back of my neck stood up again. It, it just, it's just something about it, you know, it's incredible. Now, Bert, you're standing with your back to the weight facility here at the ground. Um, you have a fantastic story to tell about the weight room as you remembered it in the old Heatley stand many years ago. Can you tell us a story about that? Yeah, um, when I first came over here, I, I coached the last year I was in WA and... Uh, I could see the need over there that players were going to have to be physically stronger for the contest and when I got here I was rather surprised that we didn't have a gymnasium and I mentioned it to um, the powers to be that we uh, and I was working part time because I had to stand out the first year I was working part time as a gym instructor at Californian Health Studios in the middle of Melbourne and uh, we had a tiny room it wouldn't have been half the size, quarter of the size of this court here um, and we set it up with, a, with a, uh, a bench press and about half a dozen dumbbells and that was our gymnasium. And when you look behind me <laughs> and you see what they've got now, it's just incredible and uh, it's something that I think would have evolved eventually, but um, I was quite proud to be a part of the very first set of weights that was put in here. Now you live these days in Bundaberg, Bill, uh, Bert, you uh, drove down uh, uh, to see the Geelong game amongst other things, um, what was it like to sit again the MCG amongst the 71,000 to see that performance yesterday? Yeah it was, uh, it was quite eerie actually because uh, you know we've got our 40 year anniversary this week on Friday and I don't know where 40 years has gone, it, when you're at the ground it, it's just like yesterday that we played and uh, it really it really gave me a uh, I reckon another 10 years on my life to see the way the boys performed it was something I was really proud of because I got to the game and I just sat up in amongst the uh, drove of Geelong supporters and uh, by half time I was giving them heaps and uh, I stood up and uh, sang the club song at the end of the game with quite some gusto, I tell you. <laughs> and you wore number 13 at Carlton in those halcyon days under Ron Barassi. But you must be thrilled to see young Chris Yaron, another West Australian, uh, wearing the jumper with distinction. Yeah, um, yeah, we're sort of are pretty proud about WA as our home state. And uh, we've produced a lot of footballers from over there and to see him come over and, uh, as I said, you know, from WA and, and, and have my number, uh, well, what do I call my number, um, is, is, uh, is quite something, you know. It was, I was quite proud to uh, see another West Aussie, a sand groper, come over and, uh, and don the Gersey and, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a proud moment uh, on the weekend. Now, you were to have driven back uh, uh, Thursday, I think, to uh, be home in Bundaberg to look after your mango orchard. Um, you've put that on hold. You've put the call through to the guys back home said, guard the farm, I'm staying on for the reunion. Is that right? Yeah, well, we should have uh, been gone this morning. We were supposed to leave at five o'clock this morning because it's a four-day drive. You know, we're 500 odd k's north of Brisbane and... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd sort of been tossing it over in my mind, you know, we've sort of got a lot on the go up there and I just, you know, after the game on the weekend, I just couldn't leave. I, you know, I, I'd regret it for the rest of my life if I, if I didn't. Even if only half the boys are there or whatever, it'll still be the, the uh, privilege of, of being there and, you know, they were really proud years and even though I only had uh, a couple of years at Carlton, uh, certainly a very, very big part of my football memory. And of course, you were there that day in September 1970, the, you know, the biggest crowd of all time, 121,696 people. You, you were mentioning before about that moment where you run out that day. Can you just remember, remember that for us? 
Yeah, um, it was really strange because we all uh, made our own way to the ground and uh, we just drove uh, into the MCG car park like anyone else and got our bag out of the car and uh, the only thing that was different with us was that we had our um, Carlton Blazers on and just walked through the crowd to a little door at the side where we went in. And uh, we, I don't think it dawned on us until we actually hit the race and when we entered that ground, the, the roar, just your whole body almost trembled. It was a sensation I'll never ever forget. It was, uh, it was just incredible. And, and like I said, there was 120 odd thousand people there, which can never be broken. And uh, that's one of the things too, that I think makes that day so memorable. Because I think a quarter of them left at half time, which was, uh, um, you know, when the final siren sounded, it was, it was unbelievable. And of course, 44 points down at half time, Bert. You were remembered famously as the man Ted Hopkins replaced, and yet you have a fantastic outlook on, on Barassi's decision and your part in that game. Yeah, well, I mean, I've always been a team player. I, I don't ever think that I was uh, a highly skilled player, but I was always a team player. And that is something that was embedded in me by my father, who coached me when I was young, that it doesn't matter what happens, the decisions that are made are always for the club, and the club and the team is always greater than any single player. And uh, even though I was extremely disappointed at half-time, I knew that there was a reason behind it and, and it, and it proved correct, you know. Uh, you know, I had a great admiration for Brassy. I played under Kevin Murray in West Australia in, in um, WA uh, teams that played Victoria and I played under a lot of good coaches but um, Ron still stands out to me as, uh, in my mind, the best coach uh, that has ever coached. But a final one, um, you know, it's it's fantastic to hear you reminisce and, and it's clear that Carlton means a lot to you, but I will ask you the question directly, what does Carlton mean to you? Uh, I think it meant the, the pinnacle of, um, of my football career because I played nearly 150 games in WA and I won a Lynn medal and I represented the state on five or six occasions, but in West Australia we always looked to the VFL at that stage as the ultimate in, in football. We, got, we used to get flogged in state teams and that. And when I got the offer to come over, if it had been anybody else, I think I would have stayed because um, I was very successful at the club I was at. And, uh, but the minute, I, this was just something about Carlton that we used to watch on um, the replays that we used to get over there. Uh, they just seemed to have that, that uh, I don't know what it is, it's a, it's a spirit that you can't describe and um, when I met the Carlton players that came over that year and George Harris and Eddie Fakery came down to the football ground to see me play uh, and I went back to the Cottesloe Hotel where they were all staying and I met the boys, they really impressed me as um, men of football, not boys of football, they, even though they were young. They impressed me of, of men of football and they were all so committed to the club and uh, I, just, I just had to come over. I, I don't care that I stood out a year at most probably the wrong time, at the most probably the peak of my playing career, but I never regretted that for a minute. There was never one second that I was here that I thought about going back home because they wouldn't clear me. And uh, I, I reckon uh, Jacko was the same. We had talks during that year where we were both out of the game and both of us said, this has got to be it. I don't care what happens, we're going to play for Carlton. And uh, it certainly is, um, you know, the most memorable part of my whole career. And of course, it's a young list we have now. You were a bit older when you came across. It's probably there and gone in a blink. So what would you say to the young group of players that are representing Carlton today about making the most of their careers? Well, yeah, that's right. I was 26. Um, I just say to these young guys, don't miss the opportunity. You're only going to get it once and there's going to be times during games and uh, uh, even during training, there's going to be times where you're going to think, oh, is this too hard or can I back off or whatever. That, that can't happen. Your career is over in a flash and uh, if you don't make the most of the opportunities, um, I was told when, uh, when Dad was coaching me as a kid, there's only two words and they both um, begin with D in football and one is determination um, 
and the other is desperation. You can be determined, but to be desperate is what the boys were on the weekend. And uh, I think if you can apply that to the football, uh, the rest will fall into place. Bert, I'd better end this interview before I become determined and desperate and run out because I think you've inspired me to do it. But I know you'll be here for the reunion on uh, Friday, Bert. You'll be there at the MCG at the weekend to cheer on the Blues against the old nemesis. Uh, let's hope it's a, it's a big one for Carlton and for yourself. Yeah, and thank you very much for the opportunity to look over all this here that brings back so many memories. Cheers, Bert.